تو بگو دفع... انگلیسیت نداری نه؟ در فارسی بگو تمام مشکل تو چی شد؟ در چی وضعی رسیدن؟ تاریخ 27 هم بردیده خانم در دریا هفته غ... غرق شد دو تا پلیس یونان هم وصاله بود اصلا کاری نکرد فقط سعید میکرده و میخندیدن فقط میخندیدن دوباره ما آمدیم سر مرز آمدیم دوباره آتن از آتن برگشتیم رفتیم سر مرز یونان سر مرز یونان رفتیم رفتیم پاسگاه و اینا رو گشتیم اینا جواب درست بر ما نداد جواب سر بالا دادن و یک تیلا شما رو از پاسگاه من انداختن بیرون یک دونه بچه دارم یک بچه می نه دیگه ما این بچه هم یک شب یک سیک چی رقم قرق شده می رو بو کلن که آمدیم چی رقم شد چی رقم نشد ما که آمدیم تاریخ 27 هم شب بود روز بود روز بود ساعت های چار چار نیم بود کشتی برگشت من تا بچه من نجات دادم خانم آب برد و هیچ کار رو نتانست میکنم When we made this film about refugees in Greece, I was constantly reminded of my own experience when I fled apartheid South Africa over 30 years ago. I was a political activist, white, middle class and university educated. Given these advantages, I had everything going for me. My journey and reception in England was very different, of course, probably because I was white and middle class and because anti-apartheid refugees were few in number and generally welcomed. The 80s were also a time of economic crisis, of course, a period of austerity now referred to as the winter of discontent. A difference then, though, was that refugees and migrants were not blamed as a contributing factor to the collapsed economy. I soon ran out of money and walked into a police station. The sergeant advised me to go to the Home Office to apply for asylum, something I hadn't considered. But I had no money to get there, so he gave me cash from his own pocket. Can you imagine that happening today, when most refugees shy away from any authority because their stories are hardly listened to and much less believed? No one called me bogus or an economic migrant, and there was absolutely no danger of my being detained or accused of coming to England to take locals' jobs. It was a profoundly different experience to how refugees are treated nowadays. Could you get a job in Kosovo? Because yes, actually I was an aeronautical engineer. I was also mayor of my city. I was also doing a PhD in conflict resolution and new models of democracy. Because, yeah, so why are you here? <laughs> well, because my house was bombed and uh, I have nothing. Now, come on. Why are you really here? <laughs> actually, I always wanted to stuff my family into a one-room bedsit in the East End of London with the chance, maybe, just maybe, I could find employment in a chip shop in Basingstoke. It is, of course, a misconception that most refugees fleeing war and persecution head for Europe. The fact is that 80% are cared for in neighbouring countries. That's right, not in Europe, but in countries that truly lack the means to offer adequate protection. Pakistan hosts about 1.7 million refugees. Compare that to 1.3 million, the total number of refugees in all 27 EU states. 
The Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya is the largest in the world. 500,000 Somalis live there. I still live in the UK, where, last year, there were some 25,000 asylum applications. That is 5% of the entire Dadaab camp population. The journey to Europe is one of extreme danger, fraught with life-threatening hurdles. Without valid travel documents, unable to legally board a plane and facing increasingly restrictive border controls, many refugees have no alternative but to place themselves in the hands of smugglers in their attempt to reach protection. Leila Hassan Amr, Lau El Mahasta, Nasser, Rahana, Afar Yulki, Yani. عشان ما عندي شيء ما هستو المين المين حمر مخدشة على إسوح هوجة تركيا ما هذا تركيا حاجة وجه على السنة تهريبة صاقة أنت ما هذا إني نقارس أنت قارس لو إل ما قدلة إني كنت ما يكتج Like Leila, today, very many asylum seekers enter the EU through Greece, and once there, in Europe, they mistakenly believe they have finally reached safety. A democracy in crisis, an economic watershed, devastating cuts in the public sector, and, ironically, as refugees arrive in Greece, many Greeks struggling to survive are choosing to move abroad. The rapid decline is visible in the streets of Athens. Many shops have pulled down the shutters. Escalating numbers of people are sleeping rough. Crime is spreading to areas that were considered safe just a couple of years ago. Violent political forces have managed to capitalize on this crisis, giving an extreme right-wing party the confidence to crusade under a pseudo swastika flag. Illegal immigration out! Out of my country! Out of my home! The living conditions for migrants and refugees in Greece are worsening by the day. Although even prior to the imposition of harsh austerity measures, their situation was already unbearable. Even then, the state detained many refugees and exposed most others to dire living conditions. Greece has demonstrably failed to establish a system to fairly assess their protection claims, placing them at clear risk of being returned to the countries where they were persecuted. Now, distrustful of the ineffective system, most refugees see little purpose in even applying for asylum, and for those who do try, they soon learn how difficult it is to get one story heard. We now hear some Europeans ask, why don't they just go somewhere else? Well, they would if they could, but legally they just can't, and this is because the EU Dublin regulation requires them to lodge their applications in the first European country they reach, and for so many refugees it is Greece. It is clear that the Dublin system is failing to protect the rights of asylum seekers because it is based on the false assumption that all European countries offer an adequate level of protection. But it is also failing European states at the borders by putting more pressure on their systems, often already weak. But finally, a breakthrough, well of sorts. In 2011, the European Court of Human Rights, in the MSS judgment, recognized that Greece, an EU member state, is not a safe place for refugees. As a result, European countries stopped sending asylum seekers back to Greece. This ruling was extremely important, but it didn't help the thousands of refugees still in Greece, unable to leave, and who continue to face the conditions the court considered to be inhuman and degrading treatment. These are the refugees we went to Athens to meet, people determined to have a future. How much further to go, they may ask, until we can reach safety? I will take this road so much further Though I know not where it takes me But when I came to Greece, unfortunately, it was a shock for me. Because everybody looks for you as uh, a third grade person, as uh, an animal. Let us to be very clear. Here everybody considers you as an animal. 
people has their own problem they want to solve it they have no time for us they told you that uh, why you came here you have to go to your country even officials this is not the talk only of the street even the official people don't will come us here although we have uh, real problems that uh, f force us to come here and also the other bad things that we came at uh, a very uh, difficult time. Now Greek suffer from the economical crisis. We consider and we appreciate this, but uh, it is out of our hand. We have nothing to do with that. Here people are in force uh, to make crimes because they have nothing to it. For me myself, for more than six months, I was just live at uh, public garden. Nothing here, nothing at all. Uh, regarding people dying slowly here, uh, just uh, guess that somebody with no shelter, with no food at winter. Well, what can we call that? Can we call this European Union? I don't think so. European countries must, must feel ashamed of this. Nothing at all. Here, some people wait for 11 years with being cut. Which country does like this? But here, even if you have humanitarian, political asylum, it is nothing. It is just a paper. It doesn't deserve uh, the ink that has been written with it. And when you check your file, you will uh, find many papers. All these papers are programs. As, as you know, you, you, are, you, you have an idea about the European Union programs. A program, B program, C program, but a big zero. And also the state doesn't, even the Ministry of Health doesn't help. If you go there, nobody help you. They told you we have nothing. Now the priority for Greek people, not for you. So, it is Europe. I think the European Union uh, must consider and uh, must check the bad situation of refugees here. As usual, they told us that Greece will make reforms. But the European Union must come himself and check the real situation. They, why they don't ju just wait the reports that prepared by the Greek government? Of course, they are not going to reflect the reality. Then they, will, they have to decide to share the refugees here. Every country uh, must take uh, some of refugees. Because these countries can afford uh, to support these refugees. But now Greek uh, uh, suffer. Greek uh, has not enough resources right now, as everybody knows. Here, people die slowly. This is what I can say about the situation here. The system is full of gaps. You have people that they are unpaid for months. If you have accommodation centers that they haven't received money uh, since 2008, and they are called to continue accommodating people, you can imagine how impossible that makes their uh, working. Phone calls, another thing. People calling from everywhere. The director of the rehabilitation center was going to say, tell Mrs. Michaelidi to come and pick him up. You know, he cannot stay here anymore. He was really focused on me, really angry at me personally. You know, I had to take that person to do what with him, you know, to take him at home. It's absolute sense for them to be frustrated and angry and desperate. Uh, the fact that they take that on NGOs, I suppose it's because we are the ones that we are in touch with them. We are the ones that actually have to uh, give them the bad news, if you like. You want accommodation, sorry, there is no accommodation. Uh, the state is faceless.
I know right now I live in the park. I don't have a, as you see, most, many of these people uh, uh, sleep in the park, in the corner of the street, 10, 15, 20, 30 people. There is no suitable reception system in Greece to meet the basic needs of asylum seekers. In the entire country, there are fewer than 1,000 reception places, and for those who can't access the scarce accommodation, they have to rely on ad hoc assistance from Greek NGOs, churches, volunteers, and migrant communities. <laughs> Refugees are resourceful by necessity. Self-support and camaraderie is high, and many manage to find some accommodation, even though it is often woefully inadequate. Too many families sharing a single room, but still, it is safer than the outside. Here there are hidden from extremist groups patrolling the streets with vicious dogs. Here there are unseen by the motorcyclists in menacing black, wearing helmets or covering their faces, who attack on the move. Dudukhtar, but short of Pisari Yunani, 
گفته خندیده یعنی در قدم جلوتر از اینا از ما رد شدن خلاصه ما فکر اون اون صد در صد اونا زدن به خاطر اینکه دیگه ما نمیدیم که شاید خود جنگ من کرده باشه نه نه یه اهل جنگ نیست خیلی آدم ساکت آرام خلاصه هست اصلا به جنوان جنگ کدام دوزی موزی میکنه شده کدام وسایل جنگ میشه باشه جدی نه هیچ گونه وسایل وسایلش هم نداشت هیچ چیز امرای خود نداره ولی متاسفانه چند دقیقه پیش بیرون رفته بود از صبح کی بیرون است تازه بیرون رفته نه تازه بیرون رفته بود دو ساعت 9 شب بود که بیرون رفته بودیم و در خان اون نو در خان و دوازده دقیقه همین حدودا اتفاق افتاد خلاص ولی ما مطمئن هستیم که هم چند به نام کسی است گروهی است به نام فاشیست یا اکچولی د گریک پیپل ار نوت Uh, races but uh, I'm aware of some incidents we don't have serious uh, cases but in any case uh, we are taking uh, uh, we're trying to take all the measures uh, to avoid or to suspend this kind of uh, racism attacks uh, I couldn't say it's not serious because even one incident is serious uh, but uh, at least uh, it's under control and no, the situation is far from being under control uh, racist violence has escalated in the last years in a rather predictable way As the, these are not single incidents these are systematic group extremist incidents against uh, migrants uh, in uh, especially in the center of Athens uh, so so racist violence is not reported to the police because people are afraid of the police are afraid that police will do nothing, but they are also afraid that the police will victimize them. Uh, half of the alleged perpetrators of racist incidents are public officers, either police, port guards, police officers, or uh, uh, other special forces. Uh, has shown, our research has shown that uh, things can change very rapidly. So we have many incidents where Greek citizens have protested against uh, racist violence uh, suffered by migrants and refugees. They said that they went to the police to denounce a racist attack against the Afghans in their neighborhood where they also live. And in the end, the police case uh, in, <laughs> stated that uh, the, these were Greeks that were attacked by Afghans. Can you believe that? So we have a twofold problem. On one hand, we have the conscious abstaining of the Greek state of doing anything in order to uh, protect rights of migrants and refugees. And on the other hand, we have the total lack of administrative capacity and the structures and, of course, the funding. You don't want to get the funding. There are many funds available from the European Refugee Fund, the European Integration Fund regarding migrants that are living in, in, in Greece, and the other European funds, uh, like the Return Fund, uh, which could fund, really, the efforts of the Greek state once it will decide to really tackle the issue for the benefit of all residents of the area, not just of migrant refugees, but also of the indigenous population. So few of those we spoke to in Athens held out any kind of hope for a future. No way here in Greece, no way back and no way forward. But there are those for whom giving up is unthinkable. Adewala is one of them. A few weeks after we talked to him in Athens, he gave us a call from Norway. Can you can you explain me a little bit the, the 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 impression and the feelings you have being in Norway and the conditions in Norway? Oh my God! No, no compare. Here everything. Here when they receive you, Paris, you feel that uh, you are in your home. If you come in winter, they will give you winter clothes. If you come in summer, they will give you summer clothes and with three or two uh, pair of shoes. Even the stages of the uh, asylum process is very, very organized here. Uh, 
Adewala's journey from Greece to Norway dramatically illustrates the profoundly different ways in which refugees are treated in Europe. It amounts to a lottery. People will do anything remotely possible to leave those countries in which their very basic needs are disregarded. This human impulse never has and never will be obstructed by a regulation. But the Dublin system is blind to this social reality, forcing asylum seekers to move on once again in search of some kind of dignified life, but at a price, as now the smugglers and the mafias lie in wait. But to be able to travel, they need cash to pay for fake documents and to enrich the smugglers, with the high risk that these criminals will simply disappear with their money. For refugees, living with no hope, resorting to the smugglers is a terrible choice. Worse still, it is an underground system that excludes those for whom the trip is too expensive or dangerous, such as the sick and the elderly, and families with children. When setting off, it is impossible for refugees to imagine how their journey will end. Some stories are shocking, such as Gebera from Somalia, who walked from Athens to Budapest. <laughs> The police of the Hungary, they catch them. They not surrender. They just try to, to cross the Hungary and they catch them. And after that, when they catch them, they surrender. They said, we are refugee from Somalia. They put him, they put him in, the, in the camp uh, one month. And they said, there is no problem, you can stay here and don't worry, everything will be good. Mm -hmm. And after that, after that, after one month, no one talked to him. They just, they talk him, and they put him back to Serbia. Serbia. They bring him back. In the, in the night, in the middle of the night, the police from Hungary, when, when they put him back to, to Serbia, they just give it to the other police from Serbia. They say, those people there for you. And when the Serbia police catch them, talk him to Macedonia again. And the, the police from Macedonia said, you are free. If you want to go back to Serbia, you can go back to Serbia. If you want to go back to, uh, to Greece, you can go back. And he just, just uh, decided to come back here. Gebera was returned from Hungary to Serbia because Hungarian authorities routinely refuse to examine on the merits those claims of asylum seekers arriving through Serbia. This Hungarian practice is based on the entirely wrong presumption that Serbia is able and willing to provide protection to these people. However, since 2009, Serbia has granted international protection to only five people. And so Gebera came full circle back to Athens by his own means. But he will probably try again soon, because some people never give up. Gabere is one of life's survivors, but many more perish on their journey to Europe. Europe has to recognize that these drownings are a shameful tragedy. But so too, we also have to face up to the awkward fact that for many of those who actually reach Europe, they continue to risk their lives to find safety. One evening we met Mahmoud in a Sudanese cafe. An interesting man who was keen to share with us everything he knew about trucks. Oh, I like this truck. I'm so energy because when I see the truck, yeah. that's good truck. Make sure your cloth is dark. Don't come for this side because the driver sometimes he see you in the mirror. We're moving like this and jumping. And sit here. This truck is good. One here, two, three, four, five. In the checkpoint, the guard is coming to check the truck. In the the police, the police sometimes they rescue, sometimes they let you go. Sometimes they send you in here in the city. My second trying to jump in the truck. He said, come on, come, come, come. Why you want to go to Italy? I said, it's my dream. 
Last February, three young Afghans in their 20s were found suffocated in a truck in Greece, destined to board a ferry to Italy. Many of those who do manage to reach Italy by boat are returned to Greece. Some don't hold out hope for a future in Italy and don't seek protection there. However, some of those who do seek to apply for asylum are returned to Greece by the Italian authorities without allowing them to make an application and have their case heard, effectively bypassing the Dublin regulation. On the surface, everything seems right. Nobody knows this is the dimness of the light. I said that we are in a process of improving and let's say that we have a asylum processing that um, uh, responds to the international and the EU standards. Will this be uh, enough? S if you have the main gate and thousands of people coming and wishing to continue and having no perspectives for integration, I don't think so. Now, what other mechanisms? The minimum is not to have the doubling functioning the way it does today, for instance. If you want to go further, but this is a personal opinion, you can examine relocation schemes within the European Union, according which standards it has to be examined and discussed. Okay? Or if you have crisis in, in a system uh, because of uh, high number of asylum applications, for instance, you could examine a responsibility sharing among the countries. You could, uh, I don't know, invest more in integration policies, for instance, and not only limit the support in border controls uh, um, uh, and, and returns, which is one aspect of the problem. But I wish that, that uh, member states would be more open to, to alleviate uh, Greece uh, on, on this. Uh, for the moment, they are not, and there is no way that the Commission can force the member states. Uh, we can encourage other member states to, 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 uh, to take on board refugees who are, have been granted asylum in Greece to come to their country. We can encourage them, we can fund it, we, we can create sort of good conditions, we can sponsor the, the trips uh, and so on. But we cannot force them, so this has to be voluntary. Uh, there might be uh, ways to do this in the future, but I think also that depends very much on the, um, the results, on the willingness from the Greek government to show that they are really committed to take their part, then the willingness from member states might, might increase as well. How, how can I say that? You know how in school when there is one kid that is being bullied and put in the corner, maybe because they look ugly or they play pranks or whatever, and then it becomes like a joke and everybody just puts them in the corner and keeps bashing them, you know? Greece has become a bit like that, you know, because we have lost credibility on so many other things and nobody believes us anymore on anything, you know, and they want to see results. And I, I can understand that frustration to some extent. Um, again, as it would be though for the kid that is being bullied, I think that, um, you know, that's also not a very good way of, of handling things. And I think there's huge expectation, you know, that within a couple of months everything will be functioning, but that simply doesn't work that way. And I think, I think what we need to be looking for is something that has been already, um, let's say, planned. That is the common European asylum system. So really, common standards and the procedures, the same way of interpreting the definition of who is a refugee and who is, who is not. Um, relatively comparable eligibility rates so that it shouldn't make a big difference to people whether they land in Italy or they land in Finland. The status should be approximately the same throughout. Um, furthermore, I think that um, there should be some kind of 
distribution key, not just of refugees, refugees are the easy part of the equation, but of asylum seekers and of rejected asylum seekers, actually. So I think uh, there are huge margins of genuine burden sharing and solidarity in the European Union at the moment that are not really being explored or very openly discussed. If Europe wants to call itself Europe, uh, there are very many different aspects of it at the moment that we are, are in discussion in the public debate, and one of them is very clearly this. Um, you can't expect from the relatively poor, relatively small uh, countries on the borders of Europe to, to keep the burden totally to themselves. I think that's um, um, unreasonable, I would say. Uh, I think that um, Europe will have an obligation, actually, to move with us towards a common European asylum system that is, you know, genuinely so. Do you want my um, my opinion? These people should be um, should given the chance to leave Greece and to go to other countries and apply there for asylum. Seekers. They are that's this is the only uh, solution for these people. Here it is very difficult and it is almost impossible to be improved. At least now. We need years and years to see an improvement. This, this, this Dublin thing is a real problem for this people. It's a real problem. Sometimes they, they catch them and they put them in jail and so on and so on. So this is the continuity of, of the dangerous thing. Let, let us be some, some way, legal way, to help these people. Mother lost her child three months on her hands because of the cold. And nobody mentioned that. No, never. Only the refugees themselves, they know that. And this is very tragedy, very sad tragedy. They have to feed themselves. So many of them, they depend on the garbages, especially the one near the supermarkets. They are everywhere. And, and nowhere. And so there is a need at least to hear them. Anyone who is now listening to my voice should know that I am an Afghan woman who left her country eight years ago. And since then, I have not had one single peaceful night. If I had a nice life in Afghanistan, I would never have left my country. No human being puts himself in a situation with no house, no country, and no possibility to survive. Only when your house is destroyed, you will leave it. I used to have a good life there, but because of the war, I have been forced to leave. When everything is destroyed, there is no option but to leave. If we had stayed in Afghanistan, it is sure that we would have lost part of our family. On our way to escape Afghanistan, we have so much suffered. But we have endured all this because we wanted to stay together and not lose anybody. We had a hope to reach a life where we could sleep safely, have a piece of bread and be all safe. This is the reason why we have passed very dangerous mountains and waters, and during the journey, many of us have lost members of their family. In the hope of finding a better life, we have lost people. Because we are human beings, we want to live as human beings. For one year, we stayed in Turkey because my daughter was sick in a hospital there. After that, we had to leave and we came to Greece. When we arrived, we didn't know that it was Greece. 
Now it has been three years and a half that we are here. At the arrival, I spent eight days in detention. It was very dirty and most people were sick. We were afraid to tell the authorities that we were sick because we thought that if we tell them, they would keep us longer. After we came out, we came to Athens. We didn't know where to go. Nobody informed us. I remember I was walking all day in the park as we did not have a place to stay. We didn't know what to do. Those who can are leaving Greece, but we lost all our money with smugglers. We don't have any way to return back or to go ahead. In these three years and a half, I have not slept in peace. Everyone knows what the conditions in Greece are. There is no need to explain more. Greeks themselves are fleeing their country. I am not alone here. There are many families here. We are now three families in one room. Three families in one room. It is very difficult. It is very difficult to find a piece of bread. So we eat food out of the garbage just to survive. We are living just like animals. I cannot send my children to school. It is not safe. They could be attacked on their way to school. We are scared when our men go out. We are scared that fascists attack them. God, what will happen with my children? We did all this so they could have a life, but they don't have any future here. For us, really, life here is a second Afghanistan. It is critically important to acknowledge the difficulties that Greece is facing. But this economic and social crisis does not lessen in any way the responsibility that Greece and the EU have with regards to respecting the human rights of refugees and asylum seekers. The hardships that refugees are facing in Greece must be of all our concern. If Greece fails to protect those fleeing persecution for whatever reason, then Europe fails too. Refugees are now the victims of government's inability to take decisions. Despite the complexity of this economic and political crisis, the response cannot be to allow what is happening in Greece to continue. If the EU is serious about building a common European asylum system, something meaningful needs to be done now.
Before two months, I went to the university to learn Greek lessons. They told me we need 700 euro. How? It doesn't work. You want to spread your culture. I want to learn your language. How I pay for you? I told them it is priority. Even the Hululu country does its, uh, pay, uh, its better to spread its culture. That's why we try to support people in, to be integrated, but to do that as a social worker, you need to have tools, you need to have resources. You're not going to do it and miraculously by waving your magic wand, you know, I'll integrate you. We took four lawyers, four lawyers. The first lawyer took our money. After two weeks, I called him. He said, what is your name? Where are you from? I don't know you. The second lawyer like this, the third lawyer like this, the fourth lawyer, she was good lawyer. She was from the Communist Party. She was good lawyer. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, chance and really it, it was very great uh, for me uh, to find somebody to listen to me.